You are listening to a Dynamic Works Productions podcast. This show is available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio Network, and many, many more podcast services around the world. You can find all our content, music, videos, books, podcasts, and more on our website, www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Have questions, comments, or concerns for us? Head on over to the social tab on www.dynamicworksproductions.com if you'd like to talk to us. Now, on with the show. Welcome back to the first episode of 2017 for the Fork in Your Ear podcast. As my phone goes off. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> it doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> Recording super late. I might as well start drinking. <laughs> uh, what is the Fork in Your Ear podcast, Nate? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been on it in a long time. <laughs> we we were just talking about it. It's true. We talk about we were just ta- we were just talking <laughs> about how on our website it says the Four Your Ear podcast, a Destiny podcast, which is not what this fucking shit is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not that I have anything against Destiny or my previous co-hosts who did that Destiny show with me. <laughs> um, Life, but- <laughs> technology, entertainment, and gaming, and bullshit. Uh, so basically what this is, if you've not listened to this podcast before, because uh, we haven't done one in about two, three months now, <laughs> is uh, myself and whomever I happen to have on tonight. It's just my buddy, the Legal Eagle, Nathan Wolf. Um, and apparently, as the description says on our website, uh, a Hearthst- Hearthstone player extraordinaire, which I guess is still true in 2017. <laughs> Um, we each bring a topic to the table, uh, in the areas of life, technology, entertainment, and gaming. Uh, our only rule in this show is we don't talk about politics or religion, uh, because A, Reddit's got that covered, and B, politics are supercharged this year, and kind of pointless to talk about. So, that being said, um, I guess this is sort of, I guess this is life? So our first topic in the life category. I read this thing today about this over-engineered straw. That's right. The kind you slurp from, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, that McDonald's. It looks, like a, it looks like a snorkel. Yeah, did you see it? <clears throat> yeah. It's like something from a, like from a submarine. It actually makes sense, though. <laughs> like, if you think about it. So basically, McDonald's made this straw, but I guess they only made, like, 2,000 of them or something weird. And They look like they're going to cost like $10 a straw. Yeah, but I guess they're <coughs> sending them to McDonald's in limited supply. So like, I don't know. It's not even enough for like one per McDonald's or something. Um, is it metal? Did we do we know what it's made out of? Mm, I didn't read the whole article, Yeah, I didn't. to be honest. <coughs> I mean, I read it, but it didn't really. I guess I'll pull it up. It was on The Verge. McDonald's straw. We're super prepared. Uh, uh, here we go. McDonald's over engineered straw, so you can drink your shamrock shake. Um, what the hell? There's a GIF that makes it look like an Apple product for the straw. <laughs> it's all got close-ups, and it looks really sleek and sexy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and to be clear, it's um. I guess they funded the re-engineering of the straw 
They hired the same teams who worked on Google on Google's Project Aura, uh, NK Labs, and Jace Design. Their product, the Straw, in all caps, which stands for Suction Tube for Reverse Axial Withdrawal. <laughs> Oh my god. I like it. <laughs> I want one. Are you, are you sure that Adam didn't invent this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you would think so, right? It's pretty great. Um, it's designed to perfectly both to mix both the chocolate and mint portions of the restaurant chain's new do layer chocolate shamrock shake. Apparently, this is a secret menu item that's now being released to everyone. Uh so these engineers and design designers worked for months on this project which resulted in a hooked plastic straw with four holes including one on the bottom uh fast company i guess fastcooldesign.com did a deep dive on the straw a lot of product development for to sell more milkshakes but whatever <laughs> straw will be given out for free in 80 cities over the next few weeks but it was only made in a limited run of 2,000 units all right, I'm going to click on this fast company to see what else they have. Um, uh, it looks it looks like a funky jazz jazzamophone. By which I mean a saxophone. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess they had physical prototypes, CAD models, fluid dynamic simulations. Oh, there's there's a quote from the designer. A lot of the designs we came up with would work well when the shake was full, or might work when the shake was empty. But in a lot of situations, we found if we didn't get the diameters just right, we'd end up drawing in air. Or the first few sips would be good, but you had to wait a minute for the straw to be recharged. Recharged? What does that mean? What? This is run on batteries? What is What is this straw? <laughs> I tell you, it's gonna it's gonna cost like twenty dollars just for the straw. The break, breakthrough <clears throat> happened in a whiteboard session. One of our team members said, "How about we change this? Instead of drinking the bottom up, we drink from the top down." They drew a J-shaped straw. The end of the J would suck in shake, as would two large holes on its tip, allowing you to get the mix you want. But as the shake dipped below the J holes, those openings wouldn't start sucking in air as a straight straw with holes would. Instead, you would continue sucking because of a vital third hole on the bottom of the straw. As long as there's shake coming through the bottom, you close off the pressure system to the tip of the J. During the prototyping phase, the team built many Frankenstraws, cutting together their ideas like craft projects and sucking in cups of layered oil and water to test their flow and mixture levels. <laughs> By spitting out each sip into a side container, they could actually measure how close they were to the 50-50 ratio. A surprisingly low-tech way to check their theories. <laughs> they got paid so much for this, and this is how they spent their time. This is great. <laughs> Meanwhile, they modeled the actual milkshake flow in software, fine-tuning designs with the help of 3D printing. Then, over the course of 100 or so shakes, bought in bulk from McDonald's and stored in the lab fridge. <laughs> great. The lab fridge is storing milkshakes. The team worked out the finer details of the straw, like how large the holes should be, and what straw diameter worked best as the shake went from thick to more melty. Uh, and there's a picture of like the straw in like a simulation thing with like a heat scan over it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Did they actually succeed? At some points when you're drinking it, you can get an exact 50-50 mix of the flavors. But with the different conditions, full cup, nearly empty cup, depending on how much it melted, you could get some slight variations. But we made sure that you're still getting both flavors all the way through. On a particular warm winter day, McDonald's PR dropped off a trio of chocolate shamrock shakes for me to test, complete with the final working straw. Uh, the straw itself is rigid plastic, almost like a metal straw. It has less girth than your average milkshake tube, but it works. My first sip was something like a... Frango mint coated in ash from a menthol cigarette. I'm not a mint guy. As I dropped below the radioactive sprinkles, the flavor mellowed out and I quickly found the shake half gone. However, as I reached the bottom inch or so shake, I found the sips intermittent, the blast of air breaking into the stream of dairy fat. I found myself wondering why I couldn't get that last sip, 
why the bottom hole that was in place for just the scenario wasn't coming through for the milkshake portal that is my mouth. Was the straw flawed? Was there an error in the physics? Or was there just too much whipped cream in the bottom of the cup for even the most advanced straw on the planet to manage? Except for, perhaps, a totally normal straw. <laughs> Of course, even Apple doesn't always get it right, and the straw is meant to be, in essence, a very self-aware Christopher Guest documentary in product form. It's meant to poke fun at innovation, all while sl slyly associating McDonald's with the very idea in the first place. Uh, and then again, the line of it will be distributed in 80 cities over the next few weeks. Limited run of 2000. If it's a success, it could be mass-produced for a wider market in the future. That's it. That's what we got. Weird. It's pretty great. I kind of want one. I want a future straw. Why, why do I want one? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Nathan. <laughs> yes. Do you have anything you'd like to talk about about the life, I don't know. the life subject <laughs> of the show? Uh, on that subject no i can't think of anything Nothing particularly that i do but i read something today that said ben affleck was uh supposedly considering not being the batman anymore yeah i heard that too <clears throat> what is that all about well he's not directing it the batman movie anymore i know that yeah no i read i read that and he had i mean I, I, that's been yeah. old news but well for the people listening at home without the interwebs but somehow the capability to still listen to a podcast. <laughs> um, uh, ben Affleck is no longer writing, directing, and producing the Batman. He's only uh, producing and directing because uh, the writing is now... I guess he did a first or second draft with uh, DC Comics president Jeff Johns. Um, but now it's getting a top-to-bottom rewrite from the guy who wrote Batman v Superman, May or may not be a good thing. I don't know. Um, and now they're like, I guess, shopping around for directors. And he had some sort of statement like, uh, it became clear to me during the process uh, that I can't do all of this at once. Uh, so to really give you the best Batman, I'm going to produce and act the shit out of the movie, basically. Something that was the, the extent of that. Um, but yeah, now there's rumblings around, and it could just be internet rumor. Uh, we all know, especially this year, 2017, how insane uh, rumors and fake news is getting spread around. So I don't know if it's legit or not. Nobody knows. But if he does back out of playing Batman, that would be... I think uh, there would be a lot of people who would just boycott Ben Affleck for the rest of his life. I, I kind of think you're right. I mean, he's gone too far now. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's he's it's already, too late at this point. He's already he will like if he backed out now, he's already played Batman three times. He did it in Batman v Superman. He had that little cameo in Suicide Squad. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It's a terrible movie. Um, and he's already completed filming of the Justice League movie. So that's that's three times. I thought he did like really good too. So yeah, if, I had if... I had zero problems with his performance as Batman or Bruce Wayne. No problem with Batman whatsoever. I had problems with scripts and other aspects that were not directly related to either his look or the way he played it. No, I thought he did remarkably well. Yes. So, but I, I I saw that little that little article all over Facebook all day, and I, all I could think of was that sad Affleck meme. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Not, like no, no, he better not. Yeah, I I, I hope it uh, I hope it does not come to pass. Um, speaking of Batman, just because we're on the topic, I saw the Lego Batman movie last night with my girlfriend for Valentine's Day. It was kind of the fucking best. Like, uh, did you see? Did you see the Lego Movie, Nathan? No, I keep meaning to, but I haven't. Really? Not. Well, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. It's, it's one of those kind of movies where it's either grab you from the moment it starts. Like, it's better than the Lego Movie. I'll I'll say that. But the thing that <coughs> the thing that's funny, and I don't know if you knew this, but so the basic gist of the plot of the Lego Batman Movie 
is uh, Batman has foiled uh, the Joker's plans to, you know, take over, blow up Gotham or whatever. And um, I guess Batman tells Joker that he doesn't care about him anymore. And that hurts Joker's <laughs> feelings. So he takes all of the Batman villains ever and he locks them all up in Arkham. And so Batman has no villains to fight. And basically Joker's like, screw you. You don't care about me. I don't care about you. And so it's actually a character piece on what is Batman if he has no villains to fight. And it is the, it's honestly not only a great movie, but it's a great Batman movie. That I love the premise. That sounds really funny. Yeah, it's actually. pretty great. Yeah, it's 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 really great. But like and the other thing about it is because it is a Lego movie, so it's it's manic uh and frenetic and crazy and fast, but there's like there's literally homages and direct references to every single piece of Batman property like ever made, particularly the movies and the TV shows. Like it references the animated series, it references Adam West, it references uh Christian Bale, it references uh Batflick, it references like wow. all of them, like in one movie, and it exists in this sort of meta universe. Like it's weird. Like in the really, like at the very beginning of the film, this is not too much terrible spoilers, but there's a line in there, something about uh, Joker uh, sa is saying something to the effect of, you know, we've been battling each other for like seventy five plus years or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, like, it's totally aware of what it is, which is also kind of amazing. Um, but it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's really quite fantastic. And then to top it all off there, without spoiling, there are really surprising cameos of other villains from other franchises because it is a Lego movie, which is pretty great. So do with that what you will. And it's 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 fucking hilarious. Uh, I, I believe uh, my girlfriend Jessica, who's also been on the show, um, she made a comment to me thirty seconds into the film, and she goes, "Jesus fucking Christ! It's only been like thirty seconds, and I'm laughing my ass off." The credit, the, <laughs> the opening credits haven't even started yet. Uh, but it's super great. Uh, I highly recommend it if you love Batman or if you love. Uh, the previous Lego movie, because it is indeed better than that, which I didn't think it was possible, because I thought the the first Lego movie was phenomenal. Um, is it, let me ask you though, is it like, is it appropriate for kids? Like, can my son watch it? Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's, it does the, um, it does the, because I mean, it is Legos, so literally anything you see on screen, I mean, it's, it's Legos, like there's no not Legos on screen. So anything you see visually, like it's not terrifying at all. And they do this thing in the movie, which is a little bit of a spoiler, but like, so there's a lot of guns in Batman, but in the Lego Batman movie, like I started laughing about it immediately. Like when everybody started pulling out their guns or whatever, and it's like, oh, it's the Joker. And like Jim Gordon's there and he's like, everybody fire. And then all the cops go, pew, 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 pew. And they actually say <laughs> pew, pew. And they do that through the whole film. And it's just, it's, well, it's pretend, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, but um, yeah, I'd say I'd say it's totally kid appropriate because there's. Is it is the is the Lego one the original one not like on Netflix or anything? I don't know. I can I can check for you. It doesn't matter. No, I'll just look later. Too bad. I'm doing it now. People listening hmm. can just. Uh, I highly recommend listeners to check out the website justwatch.com because it searches all of the video sites, streaming or buying, and it'll tell you what's it available on and if it's streaming and what's the price and everything. It's amazing. Lego. That's cool. Lego <clears throat> movie. And it also has apps for iOS and Android. Uh, it is not streaming anywhere. <laughs> oh, well. So that's the thing. That it is. That it is. Um, I also wanted to, since I'm on the topic of Lego movies, there was a trailer 
because I guess there's a third like official the Lego movie uh, coming out in September called the Lego Ninjago movie. And I guess Ninjago is like some sort of suburb ninja, like it's a set or something of the yeah, of, of yeah. The Legos. Oh, you're, you're aware of this with your kid? Yes. Oh, OK. Uh, well, I saw a trailer for it. I guess it's got like Jackie Chan and a bunch of other people in it. But it Ninjago looked... is on Netflix. It's a TV show. What? Yeah, it's like a cartoon. Yeah, we haven't watched it yet, but it's we just found it like yesterday or the day before. Okay, I guess I don't know what Ninjago is, so I guess I'm going to Wikipedia it. Lego Ninjago. Ninjago. Lego Ninjago. Uh, Lego Ninjago is a line of sets produced by Lego and also a TV show. It uses elements from the previous Ninja series. However, there are many changes with a brand new plot, characters, and TV show. One notable is the inclusion of advanced technologies, vehicles, which imply a more modern setting, setting than the feudal Japan of the previous ninja carnation, or incarnation. Uh, well, there you go. Um... Oh, wow. Uh, the Lego Ninjago movie has Dave Franco, Michael Pena, Kunji Nanjumini, that Indian dude, the funny guy from, what's it? Silicon Valley. It's got Olivia Munn, Justin Thoreau, and Jackie Chan. Right on. But anyway, I saw a trailer for it in the movie, and because it, like, it wasn't on my radar at all. Um, but now it is, because the Lego Batman movie is great, and this has the possibility to be also great um but the i guess the premise is that there's like ninjas in a city and stuff and there's like this kid and um he's like fighting this evil overlord um and then he he's in the middle of fighting him in this trailer he's just like because after all i had to be a good guy because you're the villain and you're my dad and then the villain stops and he's like <laughs> wait wait what what did you say and he's like, because you're my dad. And it does like like dramatic, like Asian, like camera movements on his face. And he's like, oh, I did not know that I was your father. And then and then and then he's like, because of course, you know, you wouldn't like know the evilness or whatever. And that doesn't make any sense. I don't know what I'm saying. It's late here. I should start drinking. Uh, <laughs> um, but but he said something to the effect to the uh, uh, his dad or whatever. And he's like, so I had to be a good guy because you're a bad guy. And then and then the dad, like in the middle of like some big dramatic moment, made it seem like some sort of Kung Fu Panda type scene. It was great. And the, like the dad villain is just like, yeah, but I didn't know I was your dad. So really me raising you had absolutely no impact on your life. So you can't really blame me for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, and it was just there was like silence between the two. And I was like, oh, OK, all right. I guess I need to see this movie now. Um, but anyway, Lego movies, they're great. If you don't like them, there's probably something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but going back to it being kid safe for your kid, um, it's Legos, so it's absolutely harmless visually. Um, and then as far as uh, what they say, uh, the language is totally uh, PG. Um, and it does that really great thing of like really good Disney and like Pixar movies where it's like totally kitty, but there's like all the like hidden innuendos and stuff that only adults will get. Right. Right. So yeah, it does stuff like that in, uh, in both the Lego movies. And I assume that trend will continue. Uh, so there you go. I've always heard good things about them. So yeah, you should see them. It, in fact, it was so funny because, uh, I was trying to get Jessica to see, see it, and she'd never seen the first one. And she loved Legos, but she refused to see the Lego movie because she's like, it looks fucking dumb. I'm not going to see it. Fuck you. And I was like, you're going to see it. It's going to happen. And well, then, That's kind of the boat that I've been in. So, yeah, I mean, well, you but should, if you, everyone says it's good, then It's it super is. good. You should just watch it with your kid. It'll be great. And then you have to buy your kid more Legos. <laughs> because that's the effect it had on me as an adult. I watched the Lego movie and immediately went out and bought a set of Legos. <laughs> it was great. That's awesome. 
Um, but no, like I basically dragged her into it and she's like, we're going to watch 15 minutes of this. And if I don't like it, we're turning it off. I was like, okay. And 20 minutes go by and I was like, so she's like, I don't know yet. Keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, like 30 minutes go by and I was like, are we still going? She's like, yeah, we're still going. I was like, okay. And then about 45 minutes in, um, she goes, fine. This movie's fucking good. You were right. <laughs> And I was like, hooray! <laughs> Which is fantastic. Um, so that was that. That was a tangent. Covered entertainment and life. Uh, I guess a little bit of technology with straws. I don't know. What... Uh... I guess there's an article today talking about uh, Amazon's drone fleet because they've got these drones and they've officially tested their drones in the UK. Um, but I guess there's talking about them aerial dropping them via parachutes to your house now. Which, I guess in theory, that sounds great. But on the other hand, what about wind? <laughs> like, how does that work? <laughs> wait, 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 what? So Amazon Prime uh, air delivery, right? What, what, the, how is that a thing? Like, I live in an apartment complex. They probably end up on my neighbor's patio instead of mine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how it works with you. I guess you have to have a backyard or there'll be, like, a dumping site, which also sounds not safe because that just means, like, they'd have to hire a security guard to, like, guard a piece, piece of grass and make sure people don't steal it. How do they not, like charge you for the like jet fuel <laughs> uh it's all battery powered <laughs> wait is it you say like it's like drones or something yeah it's drones how can they lift is there like a weight limit on what you can order yeah i think it's like 10 pounds or something interesting uh here amazon prime air drones Yeah, here's the thing from December 15th. Uh, come on, Forbes, get this crap out of the way. Let me get to the article. Uh, Amazon Prime air delivery drones fly out in our hearts with a package of five pounds or less. There you go. Um, it's a little creepy. <laughs> so Wednesday, Jeff Bezos announced the first ever Amazon Prime air customer delivery. Delivery was made out of the Prime Air Fulfillment Center in Cambridge in the UK. The Prime Air drone flew over uh, car over Calm is Hell farmland, accompanied by other drones and probably a helicopter to make the slew of advertisement. Just look at how happy Richard B is when he finally received his new Amazon Fire TV stick and a bag of popcorn. Um... Um, where's the thing? I was trying to get the stats of what the drone can do. Amazon Prime Air drone. Tech. We were talking about the other day because so last month, or maybe it was the month before, it like we all got a bunch of snow, which oh. is not not normal. I and mean, we, started we talking get to... snow, but we've never gotten that much snow. Well, Are we shifting the topic to snow because I can't find this shit? Uh, no, well, I, I'm thinking of Amazon, right? So oh. we were, Jill and I were talking about, um, like, we need groceries, right? Mm -hmm. And it's snowing outside for the last three days, and we don't want to go driving anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about, like, oh, hey, I wonder if the, you know, delivery places deliver. Like, oh, hey, Amazon, like, prime delivery. Like, I wonder if they deliver. Like, what happens when there's bad weather right. and stuff? Or then you have to, like, tip these guys? Or do they even go out in the snow? Anyways. Well, I mean, if it's air, I mean, it's not it's not a real person. Um, well, no, <laughs> but if it's only five pounds, then... Yeah. Um, so the way they're handling different uh, climates is they have a different drone for each climate. Interesting. Uh, they have a drone for sand, they have a drone for wind, they have a drone for rain, uh, they have a drone for heat. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So they have drones built specifically to handle each climate condition. Um, Sounds like uh, a Metal Gear game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. Basically, yes. <laughs> that is exactly, yes, basically. <laughs> um, I just can picture, like, uh, I'm sitting here, you know, playing Metal Gear 5, and I'm, like, airlifting <clears throat> plants and animals and stuff to my base. Basically. <laughs> Uh, so the technology allows the drone to autonomously fly individual packages to customers' doorsteps within 30 minutes of ordering. To qualify for 30-minute delivery, the order must be less than 5 pounds, must be small enough to fit in the cargo box that the craft will carry, and must have a delivery location within a 10-mile radius of a participating Amazon order fulfillment center. 86 percentage of packages sold by Amazon fit the weight qualification of this program. Um, there is some funky regulations for this. Um, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, has mandated Amazon's drill fly no higher than 400 feet, no faster than 100 miles per hour, and must remain within the pilot's line of sight. I don't know exactly how they get by that one if it's autonomous. Uh, these rules are consistent with a proposed set of FAA guidelines. Ultimately, Amazon hopes to operate in a slice of airspace above 200 feet and beneath 500 feet, with 500 feet being where general aviation begins. It plans to fly drones weighing a maximum of 55 pounds within a 10-mile radius of its warehouses at speeds of 50 miles per hour. Um, So there you go. Um, And I don't have the article here, but I remember reading back in December... Um, that although it's autonomous, uh, the cameras are being monitored by a real person and they can be manually controlled should something go awry. Which makes sense. There you go. Well, yeah, they... It's interesting, though. Yep, indeed. All right, so that was a bit of technology. We covered some entertainment. Gaming. What are you gaming these days, Nate? Uh, I'm, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII, like the PS1 version, downloaded through PSN on my PS3. Is that a is that a culture shock for? Uh, I don't know. I guess how old, <clears throat> how old it is and antiquated, or does it still hold up? It's like, I it's super fun. Like when all that stuff came out way back when, all the like the first quote-unquote 3d games with like the really awful polygon art Mm -hmm. um like i totally hated that style but then in all like the fighting scenes and stuff they look normal like not like the little short fat squat yeah because they go they go all out on the on the 3d political models and um but the, like the, it really uh, holds up pretty well for me because the game is really story driven, and the story is so confusing that I I mean I remember the gist of it, sure. Trying to save the planet okay. from the giant meteor and the ancients and the clones and all that stuff, but it's also so convoluted that like I mean I haven't played it in ten years or something, so. Um, it's good. It's fun. And uh, I'm just playing it with like the IGN like guide sure. so that I don't miss any secrets and stuff. Because I mean, I played it before, but I yeah, did it as, on my own. And yeah, you might as well. I, I <clears throat> missed a whole like all the secret stuff. So indeed. But um, I don't know. I'm anxious for the remake to come out. And uh, and um, yeah, yeah it's been it, fun. I think it's going to be a while. Did you see that they released oh, some new be, art yeah. for the Final Fantasy remake? Mm, no, I haven't seen it yet. I watched another like trailer clip on YouTube yesterday. Cool. But but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I mean, it looks like it's it basically looks like it's straight out of Advent Children, and the gameplay looks reminiscent of FF15 that I haven't played. But yeah, that's a good thing from, that it looks like FF15. I mean, yeah, I don't think the combat will be exactly like FF15. 
Um, it looked like action, like action RPG style. It, it is an action which, RPG, the remake. Which so are you even gonna have a? People are mad about how? How do you have a party? Like how does the party system work? In what? Like in an action RPG, do you set? Is it like Kingdom Hearts where you set what your other characters are gonna do, and then you just are control the you one? Are asking me about that for Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy 7 remake? Well, I mean, we don't know what the remake is going to be. So, how does fifteen work? Because uh, I assume you, you have some sort of party, you, but you only control like you only control Noctis. Right. Did uh, you ever play Kingdom Hearts? Any of those games? Yeah. In fact, uh, okay. I'm going to get back into them uh, come March. Uh, oh lord, this is gonna when they re- this is going to get complicated. It's so <clears throat> it's one point five and two point five HD final mix. Yes, Whatever. and then because yes, there's a game too. that came out last month, which was Kingdom Hearts 2.8. 2. 2. 8. <laughs> fragmentary Passage. So I gotta look it up. <laughs> oh, the names are so uh, yeah, silly. It's ridiculous. But yes, I, although I wish that they would have switched the order of those. Because oh, like when yeah, they no, I, it, yeah. Yeah, it makes for it. zero sense for the way that they released. Because I played, I played one, again years and years and years ago, and two. That was one of the rare games that I did like hundred percent completion on. Was two. I never it was beat just two. Super fun. I beat one. It was awesome. On the, I beat the OG PS2 Kingdom Hearts one, and I got to the final boss of Kingdom Hearts two, and I just never beat it. I like sucked ass or was under leveled or something. Um, oh yeah, I, en- I ended up like max leveling just because I was trying to get all the secrets and bonuses mm. and upgrades and all that stuff. But um, that's one that I really want to play with my son because oh yeah, that, I th- I think like you know we can we, I've been we've been replaying like the old Final Fantasy games yeah um because they're you know I mean he just turned five so I'm not I want to play anything that's not like age appropriate but the old ones are fine uh, but he can't you know he's just learning to read and they're so text heavy that oh yeah it makes it really difficult but i love the idea of the like all the disney stuff sure but you, he'll recognize you make like, i mean cloud and stuff so sure um i mean i may have different viewpoints because i don't have a kid but i personally always sort of thought based on my own experiences, like what's great when you're that age is something like Zelda, which is like super gameplay heavy, but has some reading, you know? No? Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, maybe that's out of your way since I don't think you really have much Nintendo stuff. We have a Wii U. Oh, there you go. There's some Zeldas on there. In fact, I have... We... Uh, which actually that's great that perfectly segues into what I'm playing Uh, because my girlfriend got me for Valentine's Day because I'm hotly anticipating uh, the new Zelda Breath of the Wild which looks absolutely mind-numbingly phenomenal Um, I'm replaying The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD Um, and it's funny because A, I've never played a Zelda game in HD so that's also weird and the last time I played this game was 2006 so it's also like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, but I'm also playing. I never beat that one. I'm, I'm, did you ever play it? Yeah, but I didn't like, wasn't it? It's super long. Wii? It came out. At, it was, it was really weird because it, it came out at the launch of the Wii, but it also came out on the GameCube. I feel like I played like an hour of it. It's like the 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 intro is like three hours long. It's stupid, and everybody hates it, and with good reason because it's like here's what a rupee is, and here's how to swing a sword, and it's like seriously, seriously. I played the one that I played like to death was the Wind, uh, Wind Waker, which oh, really? was super fun. I liked Wind Waker. But, uh, I didn't. I didn't like it as much as other things. I like the story in Wind Waker. The story in Wind Waker is great. It was, it was fun. Um, 
But I'm doing I'm doing Twilight Princess differently. Uh, cause A, I'm playing it with my girlfriend, cause she's never beat a Zelda game. Um, so I have to fix that. Like that that won't stand. Zelda games tend to be like super long. Not all of them. Uh I mean the one you mentioned, Wind Waker, is not super long. Um a lot of the it hand felt ha- super long when I played it. A lot of the hand <laughs> well, I mean you can get lost in the ocean. I mean that's a thing. Um, yeah, and I guess there's lots of like prizes and unlockables and stuff. Yeah. And so if you're going for like all the completion stuff too, I mean, I guess you could probably plow through it relatively quickly. Yeah, I think there is a lot of collectibles in Wind Waker, and I know in the HD remake or remaster of Wind Waker, um, they actually reduced the size of the game world and gave you like a super sail that made you go two times as fast. Because I guess a oh, common complaint, so a common complaint they heard about the first one. Was that you sailed too long? Um, it's true. It's yeah, true. I mean, I didn't, I didn't well, mind the sailing. I really like the music when you're sailing, and the little bomb stuff. Like it was cool. Uh, it was different, of course. But it's all the game. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to Twilight Princess. So she's never beat a Zelda game. She played Twilight Princess back in the day, um, but never made it through the first dungeon. Um, so we're working on the first dungeon, but because it's a remaster. It has a couple of things on it that the original didn't, and I'm playing it with all of them on, basically. So it has hero mode, which basically no hearts drop ever, and you take double damage. Um, And then on top of that, I'm being really sadistic to myself, and I'm playing in Ganondorf mode. So if you have the Ganondorf amiibo, it quadruples the damage you take. (laughs) Why would you want to do that to yourself? Because Twilight Princess, even though it's super long and there are puzzles that are really complicated, it's really easy. It's really easy in the combat department. Like, it's just insufferable. So uh, now I have to get all of the, the heart pieces, which is another thing that I'm kind of pissed about because Twilight Princess is the only one that has you collect five heart pieces, which is stupid because everyone every other game is four. And I'm just like, ah. But I'm playing with my I'm playing with my old my old Wii guidebook. I'm collecting all the things, uh, and I'm really surprised. I'm shocked at how much stuff I've forgotten about Twilight Princess, even though I remember ultimately having a good time. So I'm. Isn't playing... it funny how that happens though? Like I've yeah, been I know, right? replaying. I, I, I've also been like slowly replaying FF10, and I got like side I put it kind of on the sideline to do seven again, but like there's all kinds of stuff that I forgot about. Yeah, like wait, no, we didn't do this last time. That didn't happen last time I played it. Yeah, isn't that and weird? I'm sure like it the did. The way your but your it... memory. See, that's so funny. So I recently, um, completed uh, Majora's Mask 3DS. Um, okay. And uh, the you know Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Um, and it is a remake. Like they they actually remade things in the game. Um, but it's so weird how much I forgot stuff. And I played Majora's Mask a lot because it's probably one of my favorite Zelda games. But like I got to the last dungeon in Majora's Mask and I thought to myself, oh yeah, I remember how to play this dungeon. And then like I like enter the first room of the dungeon and there's like chests and stuff on the ceiling and I'm just like, I don't remember there being chests in the ceiling. How, how, do, I, <laughs> how do I get up there? What what do I need to do in this dungeon? And I'd totally forgotten that the dungeon has this mechanic where you flip the dungeon upside down and you got to like flip flop it back and forth to like get through the dungeon. And I got so confused in it. I, don't, I had to look at a guide and a video and I'm just like, what? How am I so bad at Zelda suddenly? <laughs> but it's weird because that, I that totally me, though, like... forgotten about it. I was I was just talking to Jill about this yesterday when like it's so easy now when we get stuck in a game you can pull up the guide on YouTube or on, like pull up a YouTube video or go on Google and you know look for a guide I've been fo- you know following an IGN guide or whatever yeah and it's so simple but like well, I mean we're not too far apart age wise I mean I remember when I was playing all this stuff for the first time and you had to like go out and buy the hint book. You know? Yeah, or talk to your friends. Um, yeah, I just can't or even talk imagine to your, how or, many... Or talk to your one friend who had internet. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. 
and then um, and then like sort of like cue your question and then maybe he'll get back to you in like five days <laughs> right well okay so i when i was a kid i played all the sierra games king's quest oh and yeah me too. space quest and i mean quest for I, and all this I played them because you're a little bit older than me i played them when i was really young so i like i remember them but i don't remember them you know what i mean like i remember I, king's like, quest and i remember putting in floppy disks and I remember playing like Full Throttle, and I remember playing Load Runner, and like all that stuff. But it's just sort of I, like um... <clears throat> it. Like when I look back at it, it seems like um, I don't know. This is gonna make me sound young, I guess. But it it remind when I look back on it, it reminds me of like the movie Aladdin, where it's like I think I remember the movie Aladdin like really well. Like, I love that movie. And I, like, watched some clips of it on YouTube recently, and I was just like, I don't... That was in the movie? <laughs> really? <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> I always that happens. But back... So back then, this is, like, before internet, and if you got stuck, it oh, was yeah. either, you, you know, screwed. get together with your friends and try to figure it out, or you could call the 800 number and pay oh, out yeah. the nose for them to tell you... Yeah, like the, the Nintendo, hint over the, the Nintendo hotline. So Sierra had one that oh, you could call, wow. right? That's where great. they would tell it. Or what what me and my friends used to do is you could write them a letter and say, Oh yeah. You know, hey, I'm playing this game. I did that I'm a couple times. In, I did that for what, you know, Star Fox Adventures. That's awesome. Like I used to save them, you know, I get my letters back in the mail from them and say, Gosh. Okay, this is what you need to do in this part. Letters. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how, like, it, it's just such a different world. But, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, speaking of things that didn't change from my memory, like, uh, like I was saying on that Majora's Mask, uh, which is a remake. Um, and I got to the final boss of the last dungeon. And I'm like, okay, I remember playing this boss. It's like two worm thingies and you fight in a sandstorm and then you get a big mask and then you become a giant and then you like destroy them with your sword so it turns out the remake they completely changed the final boss <laughs> like 110 percent added like four different Weird. parts to it you become giant but you don't have your sword and you're using fisticuffs and you've got to pick up things in the environment and there's like little things that attack you and i no joke i was on that boss for 30 minutes and I literally cannot remember a time where I was on a Zelda boss for 30 friggin' minutes. Like, it was hard. Like, he kicked my ass. Had like, I had, like, two <laughs> bottles of, like, fairies to, like, revive me. It's ridiculous. I felt like such a scrub. It was, it was totally lame. Um, also, on that note, because I'm in, I'm in full-on Zelda mode, because... In less than 15 days. Well, that's not true. In like 18 days, uh, the new Zelda game comes out, which I am beyond excited about. I'm even getting a Nintendo Switch for it S somehow. <laughs> um, but I I was looking at Zelda games and stuff because uh, I'm, I'm getting my girlfriend started on a Zelda rehab program. And I noticed that there was a Zelda game that I never bought or played and i actually picked that up two days ago uh and it's legend of zelda spirit tracks for the nintendo ds um and i played the predecessor to it phantom hourglass which was not a great zelda game by any stretch of the imagination it was actually quite frustrating um and i'm playing this and i'm, I'm actually really digging it and it's really weird like it starts off and like links like a train engineer conductor and it has this mechanic weird. of like you're on this you're on this choo-choo train like rolling around Hyrule and like cows get in the way of your tracks and you gotta like pull your you know your toot toot horn to get the cows out of the way and you gotta switch the tracks but you also have to avoid other trains that are on the tracks so you don't like crash and die um it's really it's it's interesting i'm i'm enjoying it um so anyway that's let me ask let me ask you a nintendo question since Go for like it. i haven't followed I haven't followed Nintendo for a long, long time. Go for it. Okay, so back back in the day, I which day played. <laughs> oh, the, so I played 
all of the 2D Castlevania games. Oh yeah. Like like all of them for the DS. Um there was like five or six different ones and they were yeah, so I, I have them so all good. Too. Yeah, they're super great. What I really wish is that they would like release them for download on something. No kidding. Because like I don't have a D you know, I don't have a DS and if like to to buy them mm-hmm. They're like they're like collectors. I mean, you yeah. get them on eBay for a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, it's expensive. And uh, I paid. 30, I, mean, I, have... I paid thirty four fucking dollars for my Zelda Spirit Tracks. That game came out. Jeez. I have to look it up because I'm I'm familiar with the game. Uh, Zelda Spirit Tracks came out in two thousand nine. <sighs> what? <laughs> That's old. But anyway, you were saying. Oh, so so like I mean I, I had a dig or I had a disc um of Symphony of the Night when it came out mm-hmm. for PS one a long time ago and I have the digital download now of it, but like That is they that, didn't, that is uh, the one well, aside from like the really old NES ones, like as the one main Castlevania I never played was Symphony of the Night. Oh my gosh, it's like the best one. See, uh, also dating myself. My first Castlevania game was Circle of the Moon, but then I played every single fucking Castlevania game since then. They're, they're so good. They're so yeah. good. The 2D ones. And I had the thing for the... Oh, I, I wish oh, I oh, would have oh. kept since, all this stuff. Since, since we're talking about it, um, and we'll talk about it on this podcast, uh, Netflix has announced Castlevania TV series. Which the animated, by the way, yeah, which is animated and thirty minutes a piece, by the way, and it's also animated by the people who animated Adventure Time, I guess. Which yeah. I don't know is good or bad. I've not seen Adventure Time. My friends tell me it's amazing, and I need to watch Adventure Time. I, I've heard that you have never seen it, but the art style is super unique, and I, don't, I mean, well, it's super ghetto, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It looks weird. I've seen the art style of Adventure Time. It looks weird to me. Um, but anyway, my friend was telling me that it's got like, it's like one of the most story heavy cartoons he's ever watched. And I was like, really? It looks so silly. And he's like, yeah, it is. But it's also got a really deep story. And I was like, okay. Hmm. He watches it with his, uh, to... like three year old. So maybe I'll uh, have to watch it. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. I guess it's on like Hulu or Netflix or something. I'm not sure. It's on something. Yeah. yeah it's I don't on know. something. Oh, to just watch. <laughs> Um, but oh, so I had the thing for the GameCube where you could put your Game Boy games oh, in it and then always, play it on your TV. I always wanted one of those. I'm so jelly. Do you still have it? It actually worked really well. No, I got rid of all that stuff a long, long time ago. God damn it, Nate! Why do you fail me? Yeah. But man, I wish that they would, cause like, say, I played all those Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney games. They were super fun, um, and they released all of those for digital purchase on the Wii. Mm. Um, Which if you haven't played, you totally should. They're very story driven and they're, they're both like well-written and hilarious. And yeah, that's what people do. I've heard about them. I just like, you know, I don't work in the law field, so I don't really care. (laughs) They're, I realize they're ridiculous anime things or something. They are. Yeah. Very uh, legal, owned by in name only. Yeah, they're super fun. Anyways, is it is it at all just, is it at all comparable to Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So it's not like that. Though. No, they're very different, actually. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, backing up to our other thing, Adventure Time is currently exclusively streaming on Hulu. It's got seven friggin' seasons. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. So that's the well, I'm not paying for Hulu, so yeah, nobody, never mind. Nobody is, except for my girlfriend, and she doesn't know why. <laughs> well, you just have to get her login info. Yeah. I'm going to have to. Give for, it to me. For that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll try to get on that. But, uh, uh, so, anyways, I, I haven't checked in forever, but maybe I should. I would love to play those Castlevania games again on like the TV. 
Yeah, I don't. Aside from those Game Boy Advance even... ones, you can't get the DS ones on the TV. Mm. Well, I wish, they, or even digital, like digital download see, on Castle... the DS. Castlevania. Like you can get a my son has download, a... I think. I wonder. Yeah, my like Gavin's got a 3DS. Um, now that you can do oh, that, oh, he does. It's yeah. Oh. We got him one a while back. Well, I, I got all the carts, man. I ain't using them. The what? The 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 game carts. You know, for the Castlevania games that we're talking about. <gasps> oh 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 oh! Yeah, I may just have to borrow them. Yeah, I ain't I'm using them at this. all. So go to town. Man. I should totally just borrow them and replay them. Which, but that reminds me, um, I've got Symphony of the Night on my PSN. If you want to just download it. Oh yeah, is it the OG version? Or the remake that they did. There's a remake? Yeah, the 360 version, I believe. Oh. No, I mean, it's on PSN. It's No, it's the original. Oh, okay. Super fun, though. It holds up. I mean... Let's see. Does Wikipedia say... No, it does not. Let's see where we go. Castlevania games available to download. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think they're available for download. I just looked at the official list. Bummer. Uh, you can get like the old ones on the Wii U, like the original like NES ones. Those ones were awful though. Yeah, I know. You can get Super Castlevania Four for the Super NES on the Wii. Oh, yeah, I played that one a long time ago. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, no, I guess you got to get the carts. That's stupid because they're great games. Uh, oh, I, I thought, mean, I played, I played them all before. I thought the Just Wii, the, uh, the Wii U strangely had Nintendo DS games for download. You Nintendo DS downloads. New games find digital virtual all games. There we go. Virtual console games for Wii U. Game Boy Advance. Oh. You can play Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Distance, and Area of Sorrow on your TV on the Wii U Virtual Console. Oh. So that's a thing. Well, okay then. And you can get a Wii U super cheap since they discontinued making them. Um, and then DS, they do not have any of the uh, Castlevanias uh, for the Wii U. Which I've heard is probably a good thing because I guess it's really weird emulating a handheld game that has two screens on one screen. Got to use the gamepad thing. That's weird. Um. So yeah, no, I have all the advanced games. I have all the DS games. I'll just loan them to you. Sweet. Do you, right. ha do you have a Do you have an advanced player of some kind? Oh, maybe not. Okay. I guess, I don't know. I have I... one, but uh, Jessica's using the my DS Lite to play Zelda Minish Cap. So. There's no rush. I'm cool. in the middle of like three other games at the moment. Yeah. I gotta get my uh, Spectacular Spider-Man and Batman Beyonds back from you. Oh, yeah, I've got them in a special place for you. Did you uh, so, watch them all yet? 
Uh, not all of them. Some. Terrible. Did you at least watch Spectacular Spider-Man with your kid? No, not yet. Come on, Nate. It's been a year. <laughs> well, I guess it probably has, huh? Pretty much. What, May last year, I think? I guess so. Yeah. I know so. Um, yeah. Lots of nostalgia for old games here on the Fork in Your Ear with Tim and Nate. The exclusive, almost fireside ish chat. <laughs> Stay tuned for the bonus episode in which we discuss fixing our website. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a great one and you could, it's super boring but I'm going to throw it on here anyway because we haven't had a show for months <laughs> <laughs> months and months um, okay Nate what game are you most excited for in 2017 go <clears throat> in 2017 yeah the, the year Jeez. we're currently in oh oh Death Stranding yeah, that's my pick. Yeah, I don't think that's coming out this year. <laughs> well, that's think, still my pick. I don't think there's a chance. Okay. A game, okay, what I'm looking f- a game that's I'll actually on the I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to calendar. playing. Okay, go. I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm really looking forward to playing FF15. Mm, yes, you really, should get on that. Which is already out, so mm. I don't know if that really counts. I think right. it was a 2016, but... Yeah, um, I have lots and lots of DLC <clears> this year, so that's cool. I'm really looking forward to The Last of Us 2, which I have no clue when that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, fair enough. I think it's probably a ways off since Uncharted 4 just launched last year. And yeah. there's story DLC for Uncharted 4, so that's coming. That's too. true. Yeah, yeah, I want to play that. Yeah. Did you play 4? Um, yeah, I beat it. Yeah, it was right good. On. I have it. Yeah, I have it too. Yeah, it was, a, it was, it was very fun. Um, what else? I'm looking forward to the Kingdom Hearts remakes. Oh, yeah. I'm coming back around to those old chestnuts. I'm actually pretty excited for it because when I played one, I played one when it first came out. It was, I felt like it was like, I remember thinking at the time, like, this is what the PS2 was made for. Like, it was, I think it pushed PS2 to its boundaries maybe mm, not no but <laughs> it's I, I remember like a bunch of the games that i played on ps2 prior to that were not uh, i don't know not There's pretty just this yeah maybe that's what i'm looking well, for like okay. the graphics were pretty, so I'm pretty su- great for I, the time i'm super nerdy here so kingdom hearts on purpose uh used what are you doing it is so bad scratch my back Oh, God, it's so loud. Are you scratching it with your microphone? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Nate. <laughs> All right, um, tell me, but I'm, I'm going to go soon. I'm tired. I yeah, work yeah we, should, we should get out of here. Uh, no, uh, so Kingdom Hearts used a technique that was specific to the graphics processor of the PS2 called soft shading, and that's what produced those really luscious, uh, wonderful uh, graphics. Um, and it was like some sort of feature built into the GPU, and I guess it was really easy on the GPU, which is why they were able to make uh, like things with more polygons, and like it just generally looked way better than everything else. Um, well, and it happened to work really well for their style because yeah, it, was all it, it worked super good for the art style, cartoony. Yeah, it was soft, had sort of a. I mean, I guess you could even say it had sort of a Pixar look. Because I mean that's sort yeah, of yeah, kind of sort of the same same sort of look. Um, but to close out the podcast, um, if you want to get into Kingdom Hearts, check back in March. I don't know when in March. Um, it's the twenty eighth. I just looked. I oh, just looked like an so, hour ago. So the twenty eighth of March, um, you can pick up Kingdom Hearts HD one point five and plus two point five remix which is a compilation disc of the first and second Kingdom Hearts games, uh, but it also includes other Kingdom Hearts games in them. 
um, so called. All the weird Game Boy stuff. Yeah. Well, Game Boy and PSP and 3DS and stuff. So if you really want the chron- chrono- chronological, no, nope, that's terrible. Uh, if you chronological? Want, if you want the chronological games, I would suggest picking up the 1.5 plus 2.5 remix first and then picking up the recently released Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 final chapter prologue. Um, because if you get what <laughs> this is gonna, it's just a word like a mouthful. No, I'm all gonna, the titles of their games are just such a I'm gonna train go, wreck. I'm gonna go through them all right now. I can't wait. Hey, did, it, did they yes. did they change? Like, I heard that they fixed the controls because the Kingdom Hearts one controls were a little weird, well, and then in two in two they changed them up, and I like them a lot better. And I had heard that. They right. switch the controls in one to make it the same as two. Is that right? Uh, I think it's the other way around. Uh, one fits in more now with two. They updated yes. the interface and stuff. So the controls okay. are similar. Um, so <clears throat> let me let me take a swig of booze here. All righty. So these collections contain Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix contains uh, a movie compilation consisting of high definition cutscenes from the DS game Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days as well as Kingdom Hearts 1 uh, the European version plus remix which is uh, adding the Kingdom Hearts 2 style to Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 remix contains um, what does it contain it contains movies of birth by sleep final mix and kingdom hearts recoded and then uh, kingdom hearts hd 2.5 8 Final Chapter Prologue contains the full remastered game of the 3DS Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance game. As well as a movie of Kingdom Hearts X back cover, which is a cinematic telling of the backstory behind the events of Kingdom Hearts X. It also contains Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage which is about a three to maximum six hour piece that links directly into the start of Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, which may or may not come out in the next 10 years. And then, uh, oh, and I also left out because I'm stupid and there's a lot of things in here. Uh, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix also contains Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix as playable, which my understanding that's actually the best game in the series um, and mm. takes place during the actual Keyblade Wars in the story and is actually a prequel to the entire series. Interesting. I, see, I only played one and two. Yeah, me too. Like I didn't play all I, the I didn't, I didn't all the crazy Game Boy any ones. Any of the ones, but I guess they all fit in to a thing. Oh, and I fucked mm. up as well because Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix also contains a playable re-release uh, HD version of the PS2 version, which itself is a remake of the Game Boy Advance version of Kingdom Hearts: Chain of Memories, which is a sequel, sequel to Kingdom Hearts One. Are you confused yet? <laughs> I just need to. I just need to know what order to play them in when it comes out. Oh my god! Okay. But I'm sure it'll okay. be like so. Let me look well, that it up. Does, no, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. This is so like I have the PS4 remake of Final Fantasy X and X2, and it includes bonus stuff as well because there's a, like a sequel video plus a sequel, but like bonus stuff. But when you go to the game menu, like it lists them out in order, so that like you play them in the right order. I'm sure it'll be the same thing, because it's only going to be on one disc. Right? I think uh, it will be on one disc. Uh, I would guess so. I mean, HD is a little more assets, but it's still PS2 games and handheld games. Um, they could fit on one Blu-ray, I'm sure. Okay, so, you ready for the chronological order you should play these games in? 
Yes. So Kingdom Hearts Unchained X, which is a movie in this set, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 1, then Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, then Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, then Kingdom Hearts 2, then Kingdom Hearts Coded, which is a cell phone game, and it's a movie on one of the discs. Um, blank Points. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's a thing. Look it up, I guess. Uh, then you should play Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Dot Distance. Then Kingdom Hearts 0 2 Fragmentary Passage. And then Kingdom Hearts 3. Jeez. You get all that? <laughs> you good? Okay. That's only 10 titles. Go for it. <laughs> good luck, children. That's what you should do. Alrighty. Oh, fun, fun games, though. Well, as I say things slowly, pulling up the thing that I need to say at the end of the show, because I haven't done one in a long time. Or, uh, yeah, I'm so prepared. Come on. Come on, Notes. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you, Notes. I believe in you and your search function. You got this? Nope. Is that it? Nope. That's not it. Is this it? Okay, here we go. Thanks for joining us on another fantabulous dumpster fire aborted thing of a podcast called the Fork in Your Ear Podcast for 2017. Uh, I'm your host, as always, author, podcaster, gamer, Tim K. Trotter. You can check out all of our stuff at www. See, I got the three W's this time. <laughs> www.dynamicworksproductions.com where you can find links to our Facebook page, the Fork in Your Ear Podcast. So check check us out socially there on Facebook. Or our Twitter at GetForkPod. Or you can email us your questions, comments, or concerns and have them read on the show, the Fork in Your Ear Podcast at gmail.com. We have of course our we of our course. We of our course. I've been drinking. Whatever. Uh <laughs> We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Radio Network, and wherever else fine podcasts are not sold. Uh, I, of course, wrote a book called The Citadel, Citadel of Arrival, which is available right now on Amazon Kindle Store and iTunes at Bookstore for only $2.99 with free preview download available when you visit those stores. It's a short story, only about 160, 190 pages, depending on your screen size. Again, that's $2.99 on Amazon Kindle and iTunes at Bookstore. So buy a book and support this show because I may be out of a job soon. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I got. Check out our stuff. Cool. Oh, and check out our other podcast, Rising Tide, a Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast, which has been going for four and a half fucking years now. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, Nate. It's, it's in your hands before I say our trademark catchphrase to end the show. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. You don't? Uh, uh, n- no, but I'll sign off now. Alrighty, was that it? You're not even going to say your name? Uh, no? no. I don't have anything good. Okay, fair good enough. Until next time, listeners, get forked. If you like action, you yearn for a futuristic adventure, you want to be pulled out of your humdrum routine and live vicariously through someone else's imagination land, well, have I got an offer for you, Buster. For only $2.99, you could be reading The Citadel, Arrival by Tim K.A. Trotter. So what are you waiting for, bub? Push that battle to the metal and open your wallet for all the thrills, danger, and a little bit of romance you could want from an e-pulp. Again, that's only $2.99 for The Citadel Rival by Tim K.A. Trotter. Hell, that's as cheap as buying a show or a game from the internet, kid. Get on it, now. I'll wait. Thank you for listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. You can find our podcast at www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Feel free to email us at dynamicworks at mac.com. This is Dominic Armada, the voice of Guybrush 3, but you're listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard that? We came up with that like episode no. one or two or something. It was great. I probably have, and I just don't remember. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh my god, it's 11.40. I have not been looking at the time. We should go now. Oh, geez, yes. Bye, Nate. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. Try to try to watch those shows. Uh, if you don't get through them, for us to maybe record a podcast tomorrow. Uh, Adam says he's open for Friday. Uh, okay, that might be better actually. But I'll get back to you. Yeah, I don't even know. I haven't seen Agents. I haven't seen Legion. At least Legion's only an hour this week. So, oh, that's good. It's like budgeting out two hours for that stuff, minus commercials, of course. Alrighty, man. Get you later. Thanks for the stuff on the website. Oh, for sure. Remember to do them. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. I took notes. And yeah. Be, do, do them like the video page. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good All night. Right, I'll everybody. talk to you later. Peace out, Nate. All right, Take see care, ya. Man. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so how do you want to do this? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um... <coughs> Excuse me. I have the website up if you want to go through it. Yeah, I just pulled it up right now. Uh, yeah, let's do the website. What are we doing? I don't even know what we're doing. We're doing something with the website. No, well, I just thought you had changes or updates or edits or something. Uh, let's see. Tile page, Denmark Works Productions, Denmark Works Productions is an emerging multimedia powerhouse. Especially in writing, podcasting, auto engineering. We have more than eight years of on-air experience. Uh, sure, that sounds good. Denmark Works Productions, Seattle, Washington. Then all the links. Do all the links work? Let's see. Clicking Facebook. Facebook link goes to DWP. Okay. Clicking email brings up my email. Okay. Clicking Twitter brings up dynamic <coughs> Twitter. Okay. Oh God. Now I'm all my screens are freaking out because it's opening Twitter. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. And Twitch goes to goes to me. And then YouTube goes to the networks. Okay, cool. Um, okay, we click on podcasts. Uh, podcasts. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's one thing. So the podcast font on mm -hmm. the thing where it actually says stuff is really tiny. Uh, we should make that bigger. Like, I mean, it says podcasts. It's gigantic. And then below it, it's like fucking. Oh, but it's the other ones are. Yeah, it's the wrong size. Yeah, it's microscopic. All right. Let's bump that size up like a lot. <laughs> See, over the years, Denver Productions has hosted, produced and edited many podcasts for your listening pleasure. Current recording, recurring podcasts are listed below along with download links. Yeah, that sounds good. I think I am also my humorous podcast. Join Tim, Nate, Caitlin, and Adam. I guess we could probably probably just remove Caitlin. It's not like she's on very often. Uh, join Tim, Nate. We'll probably just shorten it to Tim, Nate, and Adam. I mean, I guess we could put Jessica there. I don't know. What do you think? <clears throat> well, she's been on all the shows lately, so. Yeah, that's true. Jeez. Uh, yeah, let's, <clears throat> let's change it. Let's swap out Caitlin for Jessica. One with real curring. Is that how you spell real curring? I'm going to look that up. I think so. I'm going to look it up. It looks weird to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Real curring. How the fuck did it get to list of Bobo 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 characters from the manga and anime series Bobo 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 Bo? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, dictionary? <laughs> Uh, maybe that is not how you spell reoccurring because that's this is literally what it brought up what is happening <laughs> no, 
I'm confused. Ochre? Reoker? Rio. C C U R. Maybe there's no double R. No, there is a double R in reoccurring. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think it's probably spelled right. R U C C U R R R I. Okay, it is. All right, never mind. It's just me. Uh, along with reoccurring special guest hosts every week as we discuss all things MCU, including Agent Sealed, Agent Carter. Oh, yeah, we need to get Agent Carter out of there. Because that's dead. Uh, are you replacing these things as I'm talking? No, I'm taking notes, though. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's replace Agent Carter with uh, Legion. The MCU films and Netflix original series. I guess we could just list out the Netflix series. You think that's wise? Yeah, let's just um, let's just list out the Netflix series. Uh, all things MCU, including Agents of Shield, Legion, uh, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones. Might as well put Iron Fist on there. Along with current MCU news and comic book talk, we discussed what we thought was good, bad, and shocking, along with Easter eggs and our predictions for the future of the MCU, which to date have been alarmingly accurate. We are currently in our third year of production, with our discovery base of over 5,000. Uh, fourth year of production? I guess I should probably clarify, since I'm just sort of rambling. No, it's cool, I got it. Okay, cool. Uh, change to fourth year of production. Subscriber base. I don't even know what our stats are. I think they're bad presently. Mm. I, I glanced at them on the last podcast that I uploaded. I think they're pretty bad presently. That's kind of funny. <clears throat> I'm actually pulling it up right now. Stats. Rising tide. I could just remove that part. Uh, we have an all-time download of uh, 23,000. But December was 712 downloads. January was 338. And February was 179. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, well, it's that break. That break always kills the thing. I get more general stats. Total downloads. Download by episode. Um, is it so, like subscriptions or is it just um, downloads? I don't think you're actually able to get subscription data graphic traffic sources technology I've got geographic stats wow we have a thousand people I guess in the, in the UK go UK huh. and followed by France the French love us <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Canada, Australia, China, Brazil, Singapore, Germany, and Ireland. Interesting. And then 73 other countries. <coughs> so uh, apparently more people listen to us in Europe than in the U.S., for real? Oh, That's crazy. no, I didn't say than the U.S. U.S. is still dominant by 18,000. Oh, never mind. Uh... 6,000 of those is through iOS. 4,000 <clears> plus is through iTunes, then Mozilla, so that's Firefox. 3,500. Zune! Oh my god. <laughs> People still use that? Well, I quite, I'm looking at the stat <coughs> and I'm wondering because I. Oh my god. Hang on, I have a business call. Hang on, I'll be right back.
30 second interlude. You still there? Is this thing? Yeah. On? Okay, good. Yep. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Libsyn's interface is on Libsyn fourth interface. I know the new interface is coming like next month. So it's possible that Zune, uh, I would assume, is just like Microsoft Store or Groove or whatever the fuck they're calling it these days. Then I have something called MSIE, ZDM, <coughs> Stitcher Android is 635, Stitcher Bot. I don't know what that is. It's 633 something NS player. Stitcher's pretty big though. Yeah, I mean, it's only 600 though. It's not that much. It's still decent. I mean, I'll take it. Uh, traffic sources. What does traffic sources do? Please select an episode. Okay. I don't know what that does. I guess that doesn't do anything for me. Media. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's the only data I can get. Is downloads. So there you go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to well, say. Well, no, I mean, it's it's interesting data. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've talked to you before about the data, I guess. Okay, let's see here. I don't... Oh, I need to get back to the website. Uh, under the fork in your it says a Destiny podcast. Oh, fuck, That's really? That's not right. Damn it, Nate. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Uh, back to the Rising Tide blurb on the, mm -hmm. on the page. Uh, let's just go with a factual stat of... Um, oh, whoops. I need, fuck, I closed the wrong window. Of, uh, what was it? 20,000 downloads? Yeah, just go with the factual stat of our fourth year of production... And over twenty three thousand downloads. Gotcha. So, I mean, you know, at least we're not lying. <laughs> right. Because I don't know the <clears throat> subscriber base. At the very least, several hundred. Um, oh, I should check these links. Download for free at iTunes Store. What does this do? Pretty sure those work. I'm just going to check them. Okay, that works. Libsyn works. Stitcher. Stitcher still works. Stitcher still works. Uh, okay. Uh, connect with us at Rising Tide Twitter. Does that go to the right Twitter? Yes. Rising Tide Facebook. Uh, yes. Tumblr. <laughs> How old is this going to be? All hail Amazon. Oh my god, it's so old. Yep, there's a gif of Age of Ultron up there. That's great. Fantastic. <laughs> and we're anticipating Doctor Strange and Civil War. That's great. From October. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. That's really small print on my, my screen for some reason. Okay, then, oh yeah, dear shit. Uh, the Fork in Your Ear podcast. A Destiny podcast is, oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> uh, Nate. Wait, how did some of the stuff in there? Like, look at this. This is a mess. This is a travesty, Nate. The Fork in Your Ear podcast. A Destiny podcast. Join host, author, podcaster, and gamer Tim K. Trotter with his... <laughs> Gaggle of co-hosts, including fellow podcaster, gaming musician, Demi Newman, Legal Eagle, and Hearthstone player extraordinaire, Nathan Wolf, RNG cast podcaster, Mike List, and always inebriated, Adam Burgess. We're a topical podcast for each member of the show. I guess that's sort of all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Gaggle of co-hosts. Uh, 
Uh, let's change the last part. Uh, and I guess we could probably drop. Uh, let's drop. Uh, join host, author, podcaster, and Tom Kinchotter. Skagglecos, including Philip Podcaster. Let's just drop Gamer and Musician from Damien. Um, Legal Eagle and Hearthstone Player Extraordinaire. Are you still playing Hearthstone strongly? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess we'll keep that. R&D Podcaster, Mike List. Uh, change podcaster to capitalize there because it's capitalized earlier in the, in the, I guess, line. So podcaster should be capitalized. I guess we could probably say RG cast podcast creator mic list. I think that sounds better. What do you think? Yeah, does he still do it? <clears throat> yeah, Religi yeah, podcast creator. Yeah, religiously. Yeah, so RNG cast podcast creator, Mike List. And always need bearded adverbs. Uh, we are topical. And then, the, okay, yeah, this last part. We are a topical podcast where each member of the show brings a topic in the categories of life, technology, entertainment, gaming. And we discuss. You know, our only rule, our only rule is no politics or religion and then maybe in like ellipsis reddit has that shit covered <laughs> or has that stuff covered perhaps probably a little nicer uh what will each episode be about jump in and find out yeah that's still fun <coughs> cool okay uh, i guess i should check these links since it still says a dusting podcast <laughs> Part of it is that, like, under iTunes, it's still, it's still like, the link works. But if you look up in the URL, like, it says Agents of the Nine, but it's not, like, because you're using the same feed or whatever. Uh, I'm looking at it in iTunes. It says, oh, it does say Description Agents of the Nine, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, well, some of it does. but then Well, up in the URL, it does, too. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I can't do anything to change that. I mean, and in the yeah, because it switched. I mean, it. Yeah. I mean, I guess it used to be that feed, and it changed. Uh -huh. Yeah, that feed stuff. It's on a really long sort of like time machine when that stuff changes. Um, I would have think thought it would have changed by now. I thought it was like I remember it was like every quarter or six months. I don't know. Maybe they changed that. I don't know. I don't handle the feed. That's Libsyn's job. That's what I well, mean. as long as it as long as the links work. Yes, Libsyn Podcast. Although, oh, God. Libsyn Podcast still has the fucking Wizards Rule thing. How do we really change big that? Uh, I assume it's something with Libsyn, but... Yeah, I've tried to change it before, but obviously I've failed. Uh, I'm going to write a to-do. Not that. Give me a new, new thing. Uh, GBP Maintenance to-do list. Oops, not that. Give me a new line. There we go. Fix fork in your ear Libsyn page feed uh, cover icon. It is still using wizard's rule photo from like 1999. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, that's there, but the feed looks like it's working. Do you uh, have a Twitter for it? <coughs> for fork in your ear? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. I don't have the, I guess, I don't have the link set up for it then. Ball sack. Um, let me... Uh, I have it on my phone, and I know how to send the link to my Twitter on my phone. So I'm just going to... I'm sure I could probably just Google it. Let's see. Uh, I've, got, I've got it on... Oh, here it is. I guess it would be the... Uh... Oh, no. That's the Twitter address. Well, what is it? Uh, it's at get forked. 
pod. <laughs> Does that help? You found it. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, it's got a picture of uh, clouds that I shot through the tent of my truck. <laughs> I should change that to something. I should make something for it, actually. Uh, actually, that should be on the to-do list. Tim. It doesn't look bad, to be honest. No, it doesn't, but it's old at this point. So Yeah. I could make something with those art assets that I... I gotta remember how to use that program again. Um, make new Twitter... Uh, slash Facebook banner for fork in your ear. Okay. Uh, fork in your ear Facebook. That is working. Good. Um, okay. I think that does it for podcast page. Apps. DWP's contributed audio composition engineering to wildly entertaining and interesting. Learn more about it here. That's a game, and all this stuff is from the App Store, which I assume still goes to this app. <laughs> the link works. Yeah. That's hilarious. I'm looking at the customer reviews. <clears throat> One says negative 10 stars. Looks like a <laughs> kindergarten. Gartner made it. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's supposed to look that way. It's emulating a look, but it is also the limit of the gra of the graphical capability of my friend Chad. <laughs> oh, classic. That's pretty good. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so that still works. Uh, clicking the center button still leads back to the main page. Music. Audio samples from the Citadel Rival. I'm pretty sure these all work. Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I'm not even going to look at them. I know that those work. Video. Why is the video page still shit, Nate? <laughs> it's been a year. <laughs> Somebody, well, somebody needs to write something. <laughs> uh youtube um how do we how do we embed a youtube and how do we embed a twitch there um do i well, have to go get embed thingies from my places i don't think so but <laughs> like the no no here's what i'm curious about i i can what like what do you want to embed? Because, like, say YouTube, for example, you probably have, you know, yeah. 50 videos or something like you. I mean, I can see what type of apps are what like what's available like to embed. Like, do I, you want the most recent video or <coughs> or like some way to like embed the channel? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, uh, I guess some way to embed the channel. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'm looking at it right now to see if I can find something. Uh, I think I have a lot of uploads. If I can find these. Um, I go, oh, Creator Studio. And then, wait. This is I mean, I'm sure I can probably figure out whatever. I just don't know what to actually embed. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Oh, this is the wrong fucking. This is this is my personal account. I need to sign out and sign in with Diane. Works mailbag. Yes. Uh, how do I? No. I. How do I 
Oh, sign in with a different account. I did the wrong button thing. Okay. Video dynamic works mailbag. There we go. There we go. Okay, there we go. Got to my main account. Go create our studio. Uh, this one has watched eight minutes in the last 28 days. Huzzah! <laughs> <coughs> I'm all discombobulated. Today's is Wednesday, so what? Was Legion on tonight? Yes. Weren't you the one telling me it was on at like 10? Or something? Yeah. Did yeah. you watch Shield already? Nope. Oh, should should get on that. No, I'll watch it. Mm, maybe tonight. Maybe. Okay. I'll try. How was it? I don't know. I haven't seen it. No. No, Jessica tonight. No show. Besides, we we've been doing them pretty much right before we record. Oh, makes sense. <clears throat> and it's more fresh, at least. Yeah. Um, cause she likes to take notes, which then makes me feel bad for not taking notes. And so to not take notes, we just watch the show before the, we do the show. Uh, that's how that works. Channel, maybe channel. Uh, community guidelines. I used to take notes, but it's not. Um, when there's like lots of Easter eggs or something crazy going on, then sometimes I will, but. Yeah. I felt that it was like really necessary lately. I don't know. My Twitter blew up on it last night when I was at the movies. Um, I guess it's got lots of huge plot twists. Hmm. So I don't even know. I don't even know how the fuck. Would be helping feedback. Uh, embed. YouTube page. Embedding videos, embedding a channel or playlist. There we go. Product forums. So it looks like I have to embed a playlist. Uh, it says, uh, take a look at the embedded code. This is where you insert your YouTube username, delete your channel name and replace it with the actual username, embed this code, copy embedded code into your website blog. That's it. Channel should now be embedded in that page. Um, embed your channel. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll see what I can do. Here is link. That's what it's telling me to do. So those are. What is that? And then Twitch. I guess I might as well Google it now. Embed Twitch channel. Um, no, that's old. <coughs> From GitHub. Early authors for the tools. I don't know. I'll See. figure it out. I'll figure it out. Okay, figure those things out. Get back to me. And I'll give do you, you do name. you want any sort of description, or you want me to just embed them and have it that be that? Uh, yeah. Let's do description. 
I mean, the embed LD must work, but YouTube can just be like, uh, um, YouTube should say, uh, check out our official Dynamic Works Productions YouTube page where all future videos will be located, as well as the archive uh, streams of uh, Tim, K. Tim K. Trotter's uh, Twitch streams. You got all that? I uh, pretty much did. <clears throat> pretty much did? What do you mean, Nate? Where all future videos will be located as well as what, what was, the, like, what, oh, archives, video archives uh, of Twitch stream. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then Twitch should say, uh, check out Tim K. Trotter's uh, live Twitch streams, as well as a selection of archived content. Or... Uh, back wait back up. Uh, check out uh, Tim K. Trotter's live Twitch streams, and I don't know something like interact with him and company live. I guess because that's what you do on Twitch. It doesn't sound good. I'll figure out some things. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and then that Twitch link is working should be and then social yeah okay these are embedded so that's good ddbb facebook ddbb twitter rising dead facebook rising dead twitter yeah agent nine is all fucked up well it's not all fucked up i mean it's there but it shouldn't be there anymore the bottom embedded things the agents of the nine tweets and facebook that should be replaced with fork in your ear oh yeah i can swap it out <clears throat> uh let's see you're all over social media and we we would love to connect with you chat to us and have your comments read on the air please note that the links to social media page for our individual podcasts can be found on the podcast page uh, well, that's not true, since they're right there. <laughs> so, we need to revise that. Um, so, revise the line on the social page. Uh, we are all over social media. Uh, remove the comma there, because and is its own comma. And we'd love to connect with you. Reach out to us and have your comments read on the air. Uh, I guess that's it, really. I don't know what else to say. Uh, remove the please note that the links to social media pages because they go to all the correct places. So that doesn't... It's like saying go back to the podcast page. Yes, the links are there, but the links are also here too. Gotcha. You know, like it's redundant. Uh, so we got that big all social thing and we got connect with us online. Should there be... something else there maybe uh -huh. maybe something quirky like social connect with us online if you dare or something <laughs> yes that's funny <laughs> yeah let's do that so do that and then we have contact 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 us in your comments maybe right on the air on air Merck also offers a wide range of writing and audio engineering Cirruses? That's not a word, Nate. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and I guess we could remove wide, because I don't know if the range is wide. We offer a range. A range is true, technically. <laughs> So drop wide, uh, replace services with correct spelling of services. Gotcha. Uh, I got contact and it works, which leads to a link, to email, or email through the page. 
Um, okay, so on that subject scroll tab thing, mm -hmm. uh, there's no one there for Fork in Your Ear. Mm. And you can go ahead and keep Agents of Nine on there. That's fine. Uh, other than that, I don't know what else to do. What about the author page? <clears throat> oh, shit. I didn't even... I skipped right over that. Author, DWB, Shunner, CO. Uh, Technically, Turner has also published author. Blow to learn more about his debut novella, The Citadel Arrival. Uh, um... Can we have the, uh, the book art be bigger? Yeah, let me go back there. How big do you want it? Like, it's pretty big. Like, it's on my laptop, Yeah. it takes up almost the whole screen. I mean, I make it bigger. And does it scale on... Here, let me take it off the... <clears throat> it'll scale on... Here. I'm it'll scale on mobile. Yeah, I know right. it scales on mobile. The mobile does does great. Uh, here, I'm opening up the site on my smaller laptop screen. Let me see here. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if this makes any sense to you or not, but so you see how it says DWP's founder and read below too, like those words. I feel like the art should be like in sync with the length of that line. Oh, yeah, okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I can do that. That's, I don't <clears throat> yeah. know, it's probably like two times bigger or something. Um, that's still the same description. Views are fine. Purchase the book, iTunes store, iBook. Opens correctly. 19th preview. That's great. Oh my god, 2014. So long ago. Amazon.com opens to arrival. Um, okay. Oh, about Tim Piotrano. Email Tim Piotrano. Yes, that works. Tim Piotrano on Twitter. It works as well. Uh, Facebook. That works as well, too. Those are things. Okay, that's all fine. Um, the only other thing I got is, uh, is there any way we can make like the the font of the um, all the buttons up top like bigger? Uh, yeah. Like just punch them up some size. Yeah, as long as I can try to make it fit on um, <clears throat> on one screen or like on to not uh, overlap. But yeah, I think that's I think I can oh. I'll kick it up a little bit. Yeah, kick it up a bit. Because I know I know it looks great on mobile. I've never had a problem with the way it looks on mobile because everything scales really nice. Um, but looking at my computer, it's like pretty small. And yeah, I mean, I can you know, increase my screen size, but then it's like... Well, no, but you shouldn't have to, though. Yeah, I know. So, anyways. Uh, that's all I got. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Sweet. Just Let's... trying to keep it... Trying to keep it updated, so... <clears throat> Sweet, let's do a makeshift show. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, are you ready? Sure. Okay. Did you have any topics you particularly <laughs> wish to talk about? No. <laughs> no, I really don't. But, I mean, whatever. Okay, cool, because I'm mostly winging it anyway. <laughs>
Oh, Lord Almighty. Let's close this window and this window. Uh, we'll respond that later. Push this down. Push this down. There we go. There. Oh, the no, get him now. There we go. Then I'll go sparry here. Make I'll make that jump off. There we go. Alright, cool. 40 minutes in. Um I will remember 40 minutes in. All right, cool. Uh, so. Cut in. <laughs> I'm so sure because I've not done this in a while. Um, yeah, OK, cut in.